We are diagnosing Judder on my E61 5 Series BMW. The Judder occurs under heavy braking at high speeds. That was the initial symptom, so motorway speeds, applying the brakes, the steering wheel would vibrate like mad. Um, couldn't really feel it through the brake pedal, mostly through, through the steering. So we've changed a few parts already. On first investigation, getting under the car, it was obvious that the front radius arms needed replacing, so both ball joints knackered and knocking. Also, both bushings, not sure if you can see, but split, uh, split in multiple places. Near there. So, I swapped them out. Um, the old ones had only been on the car eight months, but that's, that's cheap Euro car parts. Uh, Starline branded arms for you, so we replaced them with premium parts. Um, next job was a bit more involved than suspension arms. Um, there was an obvious uh, rattle or amount of free play from the steering rack itself. So if I had someone in the car shaking the steering wheel um, just gently back and forth, the rack wasn't moving and you could hear um, a rattle from inside, a knock from inside. So the problem there was that the, the rack was just worn out, um, particularly in the centre point. Um, because it was a, it's a car with very high mileage, 220,000, mostly motorway, the middle of the rack's just worn out. Um, so changed all this. Incredible difference in driving feel. The steering feels fantastic now. Um, the front end feels tight, but it made the vibration under braking even worse. So having removed all the free play from my suspension and steering, all of the vibration is now transmitted to the steering wheel rather than some of it being absorbed by these some of it absorbed by these and some of it absorbed by this so now it's at sort of 60 to motorway speed limit um, miles per hour and um, that i get the judder anytime i touch the brakes so let's head out jack the car up and do some investigation on the brakes so given that my front suspension arms and steering rack have been changed my inner and outer track rod ends have been changed. The lower middle control arms have been changed. We basically have almost new suspension and steering throughout. So the highest mileage part in there is probably my lower control arms that have done 2,000 miles. My brake rotors have done 5,000 miles and are a premium Brembo rotor paired with premium Ferrodo pads. Um, they've probably done five or 6,000 miles but I think that's where we're going to find the problem. Um, I've swapped the wheels front to back, so tyres are ruled out and wheel balancing's ruled out. Uh, I've had the alignment done and it's all within spec, so we'll get it jacked up, take the wheel off and show you how we're going to diagnose the rotors. So when I did the brake job, I followed a few extra steps that are sort of best practice when you're changing brakes, one of which was to use this abrasive pad on the face of the hub that's behind the rotor um, and making sure that the inner face of the rotor and the face of the hub were absolutely spotless and bright metal before installing the rotor. The sort of pad um, and caliper brackets, so the pad slide within this bracket, I ensured that all rust was removed in there and that was back to bright metal as well. Um, I replaced the caliper slide pins and rubber bushes too. So. I thought I had used premium parts and done a really good job of fitting the brakes, but we've still got Judder, so we'll get into how we're going to diagnose that now. Either I have uneven brake pad deposits on the rotor, so there'd be a high spot somewhere, and every time that high spot passes through the caliper, it, it causes an uneven braking force which results in the steering wheel Judder. The alternative is that I have run out of the rotor, which would be caused by uh, either the hub having run out itself or the smallest piece of dirt or rust in between the rotor and the hub. So we're going to measure for run out today. I've got the dial gauge set up. This is a magnetic base and I've just put that on the steel suspension strut. There's a lot of aluminium on an E60 or E61 um, suspension set up so there's not many places you can stick this to um, but the strut is a reliable one. And then the dial gauge is fixed rigidly here just touching against the rotor, maybe 10 millimeters in from the edge. And the plan here is that once we've zeroed it, we'll rotate the rotor and see if there's a variation in uh, the reading on the dial gauge as it rotates to tell us if the 
if the rotor's sort of on a different plane as it rotates or if it's rotating straight and true and that is what we call a uh, run out. Okay so I've zeroed the dial gauge on the lowest spot and we're going to do a full revolution of the rotor to see what our lateral run out is so we want to see it beneath 0.05 millimeters for the rotor to be in spec and anything above could be a cause of our vibration. Okay, so that's one full revolution or a bit more and it looks like we're in spec if we the highest number we saw was 0 0.03 and the lowest minus 0 0.01 that's a range of 0 0.04 millimeters uh, which is within spec okay so we'll get this wheel back on and then go to the other side but two things to note when reinstalling the wheel one I've cleaned this face and clean this face so that means that the wheel's going to mount flush and not have any run out of its own that could lead to vibration issues. And the second thing will be the way that we torque this wheel to ensure even clamping force on the rotor. Okay, so how to properly torque down your wheel nuts. Um, I've started them all by hand, so we're not crossing any threads. You don't need an impact driver, but mine's set to the minimum torque, and it's not a particularly powerful driver anyway. So we'll snug down all of the nuts first. Okay, so they're now tightened down but not torqued. The wheel's just securely attached now and we can lower the car to the ground. And then we'll switch to our torque wrench. Um, and rather than go straight to full tightening torque, we're gonna do an initial tightening to 50, 50 or so Newton meters. So I've gone 56 just because that's the setting that's available on this torque wrench. Uh, and I'll go in a cross pattern. And if you observe there, the socket did actually rotate every nut. So that means we didn't over torque with the gun. Uh, that was less than 50 with the gun. Now they're all at 50. So we can now go up to our full tightening torque which is around 110 120 newton meters um, on this car i've gone 110 and again i'll go in a cross pattern okay so they're all now at even torque but just as a final check i like to go around counterclockwise and just make sure that they are all definitely tight and i've not missed one Okay, and key thing there is I'm not tightening them any further, I'm just letting the wrench click so that I know that they're at the correct torque. So now all five wheel nuts at the correct torque, that wheel's on and we can move around to the next side. Okay, so now we're set up on the other side, on the driver's side now, dial gauge in position, zeroed, and we're going to do a full rotation at least of the rotor and see what the run out is. Okay, so we saw a range there, minimum minus 0 0.02, max 0 0.03, so that's 0 0.05 millimetres total run out, which is again just within spec. Um, the vibration that I'm getting at the steering wheel is not something that you'd get 
from being on the borderline of in or out of spec. It's much more harsh than that. So I believe that run out isn't the problem. And I think that's what's most likely is uneven pad deposits or something I've not thought of yet. So I'll drive for a few uh, days or weeks to see if the pad deposits wear out. Um, and then we'll go from there.